Well, thanks for joining us for another episode in this DC Cares series. Uh, this series, we've been talking about some practical ideas and resources for caregivers, and in particular, caregivers taking care of someone who has Alzheimer's or some form of dementia. And uh, we know it is a difficult journey, uh, and it requires a lot from the caregiver, and I'm hopeful that the things we've been talking about uh, provide some real practical help. One of the things that can happen when you're caring for someone is a medical emergency that requires EMTs to come. And so today I'm joined with uh, my guest, uh, Assistant Chief Tony Hudson, who's also mm -hmm. a member of DCC. So Tony, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So, um, so we all know that medical emergencies happen. And, and of course, one of the scenarios, and I saw this being a chaplain, mm -hmm. is sometimes it is the caregiver that has the medical emergency. What is, I guess, being prepared is the, the important thing. What is it the caregivers can do in advance of an emergency to be prepared if it happens? Yeah, so there's a, there's a number of things, Tim. So uh, we offer a what we call a 911 alert vial. And inside this vial, uh, there's a sticker that goes on your door. All this paperwork, uh, you fill out, you put into the vial, and then you put the vial in your refrigerator. And so this helps us. This is just one facet of being prepared, right? Because it lists medications, contacts. Um, there's other forms. There's durable power of attorney forms. There's a pulse. Uh, if people aren't familiar with a pulse, physicians orders life for life-sustaining treatment. So do you want CPR? Do you not want CPR? Things like that. So having so, one of these filled out in the refrigerator, right, helps us immensely when okay. we get there. So kind of all the things that an EMT would be asking questions Correct. about that you may not be able to respond to Correct. if you've lost consciousness. In this particular context, talking about a caregiver who's caring for someone who mm -hmm. is mentally disabled, uh, it can be the caregiver Absolutely. that is the one who is down, mm -hmm. not able to talk. Um, and that then leaves this whole issue of what about the person they're caring for? Address that maybe. Yeah, so that's always a tricky situation, but we try to help facilitate that, right? And whether that's the person being cared for maybe has to go to the hospital with the caregiver, uh, but we always try to find uh, either a temporary caregiver or a friend, a neighbor, somebody that can take care of that person until the emergency is resolved and, and longer, right, until we can get another caregiver in place. So our folks will always try to help facilitate that. Uh, I mean, we obviously can't stay there for hours and, and help them do that, but we'll make phone calls, do whatever we can to help facilitate getting somebody, somebody else in place because you can't leave that person alone, obviously. So. Correct. So, but and that's, an, that's another point about being prepared, right, is just have those backups in place. And I would think that that would be something to include in this vial. Absolutely. If you've got that name, contact mm -hmm. information, uh, and I would think maybe even some description about your loved one, um, what their condition is and yeah. what is upsetting to them or helpful to them. Yeah, absolutely. Very important. And there's a, you know, there's a... A small space for medical history in here, but you can always add additional in here. So just as, as you said, right, I mean, not just their medical history, what the actual medical problems are, but what you need to do maybe to take care of them, right, and try to keep them calm right. and comfortable. So. You know, I'm just thinking of this. We did another episode, and I don't know if people at home are watching these in order or out of order, but there's an episode we talk about uh, stay care respite care that's available mm -hmm. through Dungeness Court. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking that if maybe part of that preparation, whether a person uses that service on a regular basis or not, to at least have gone, checked out a program like that, um, kind of done whatever they need to to set up there. And then maybe if there's a neighbor who's willing to transport that loved one sure. there, then they know they've got some place yeah. that can do, you know, putting them to bed, meals, all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, absolutely, right? I, we said in the beginning, right, be prepared, right? So preparation is the key, having that, those things in place uh, or as in place as you can have them before something happens. Yeah. So it's not a, 
it's not a, a rush or trying to find somebody that maybe you don't know. Right. Yeah, and I just mentioned that respite piece of this because I think it would be, what if you had to be in the hospital for several days and you feel uncomfortable asking a friend to take on that responsibility? Yeah, that's a challenge. So. This would give a, a very good option to Absolutely. provide that kind of care. Absolutely. Um, anything else that people should be thinking about being prepared? Uh, I don't think there's um, just the things we've talked about, right? I mean, making sure you have the paperwork filled out. One of the most important things, uh, and maybe not necessarily in the case of <clears throat> the caregiver going down, but with the patient, right? If something catastrophic happens to the patient is having the appropriate paperwork like a pulse form or uh, advanced medical directive is having that on site signed, have the original, uh, not a copy or anything like that because we will get caught in situations where uh, he or she doesn't want CPR, right? We don't want you to do this, but we don't have the paperwork that explicitly sp spells that out. So okay. just along with being prepared, make sure you have the paperwork, make sure you know where the paperwork's at because lots of folks will keep it in the safe or right, and that's a good place to keep it, but having quick access to it is important. That's where too. this yep. helps. Absolutely. And you so. need originals, not copies. Originals, not copies. Okay. Yeah. So how do people get one of these great little vials? So the vials, you can get at our admin office. Our admin office is now uh, on Carlsberg Road, across from the Carlsberg Post Office, so you okay. can get it there. You can also get it at the fire station in Squim at 323 North 5th Avenue, which is you know, right a, a pretty familiar place for folks. They're okay. free. There's no cost to them. You just uh, come in, tell them you want a 911 vial, and they know exactly what you're talking about. So. All right. And then this sticker comes, and this goes on the front door. Yep. So it all comes. That's why it's all crinkled, because it all comes rolled up in the in the okay. bottle, right? So sticker goes on the 911 door. That alerts our folks that they should look in the refrigerator door for the packet. And then you would fill out all the paperwork, or as much paperwork as you want to. There's a... There's a healthcare directive. There's what we call a face sheet. So it has all the, all your medications and all the other uh, pertinent information. Uh, there's a medical directive that you can, or a healthcare directive that you can fill out. The green form is our pulse form, uh, which is a state form. All right, it has to be signed by your physician, right? So there's some homework to it. Uh, and then there's a durable power of attorney form for healthcare that also needs to be signed by witnesses and things like that. But we try to give you all the things you're going to need, right? And you may not need every single one, but they're all there for available okay. for you. Good. And then you just roll them back up and cram them back in that bottle. So, all right. Well, great resource. Um, I would encourage you, if you're watching this, make a plan to take care of it this week. If you're like me, this kind of paperwork is really easy to put off because you think I'll get around to that sometime soon. But emergencies happen when you're not ready for Correct. it. So uh, just make a plan. Go pick up a vial, fill out the paperwork, put it in the refrigerator, and uh, be ready for whatever may happen. Absolutely. Great. So, Thanks, Tony. Thank you.